Good morning, Team Alabama. We are ready to read in the Hunger Games. Please join me on page 121. Myself? That's no good either. Hey, Mitch says, I'm sullen and hostile, I say. Well, you are around Haymitch, says Senna with a grin. I don't find you so. The prep team adores you. You even won over the games makers. And as for the citizens of the capital, well, they can't stop talking about you. No one can help but admire your spirit. My spirit? This is a new thought. I am not sure exactly what it means, but it suggests I'm a fighter in a sort of brave way. It's not as if I'm never friendly. Okay, maybe I don't go around loving everybody I meet. Maybe my smiles are hard to come by, but I do care for some people. Senna takes my hands in his warm ones. Suppose when you answer the questions, you think you're addressing a friend back home. Who would your best friend be? Asks Senna. Gail, I say instantly. Only it doesn't make sense, Senna. I would never be telling Gail those things about me. He already knows them. What about me? Could you think of me as a friend? Asks Senna. Of all the people I've met since I left home, Senna is by far my favorite. I liked him right off and he hasn't disappointed me yet. I think so, but I'll be sitting on the main platform with the other stylists. You'll be able to look right at me. When you're asked a question, find me and answer it as honestly as possible, asks Senna. Even if what I think is horrible, I ask, because it might be really, especially if what you think is horrible, says Senna. You'll try it? I nod. It's a plan or at least a straw to grasp at. Too soon, it's time to go. The interviews take place on a stage constructed in front of the training center. Once I leave my room, it will be only minutes until I'm in front of the crowd, the cameras, and all of Pan Am. As Senna turns the doorknob, I stop his hand. Senna, I'm completely overcome with stage fright. Remember, they already love you. He says gently, just be yourself. We meet up with the rest of District 12 crowd at the elevator. Portia and her gang have been hard at work. Peta looks striking in a black suit with a flame accent. While we look well together, it's a relief not to be dressed identically. Haymitch and Effie are all fancied up for the occasion, and I avoid Haymitch but accept Effie's compliment. Effie can be tiresome and clueless, but she's not destructive like Haymitch. When the elevator opens and the other tributes are being lined up to this, take the stage, all 24 of us sit in a big arc throughout the interviews. I'll be last or second to last since the girl tribute precedes the boy from each district. How I wish I could be first and get the whole thing out of the way. Now I'll have to listen to how witty, funny, humble, fierce, and charming everybody else is before I go up. Plus, the audience will start to get bored just as the game makers did, and I can't exactly shoot an arrow into the crowd to get their attention. Right? Before we parade onto the stage, Haymitch hey comes up behind Peta and me and growls, Remember, you're still a happy pair, so act like it. What? I thought we abandoned that when Peta asked for separate coaching, but I guess that was a private, not a public thing. Anyway, there's not much chance for... in interaction now as we walk single file to our seats and take our places. Just stepping on the stage makes my breathing rapid and shallow. I can feel my pulse pounding in my temples. It's a relief to get to my chair because between the heels and my legs shaking, I'm afraid I'll, I'll trip. Although evening is falling and the circle city circle is brighter than a summer's day. An elevated seating unit has been set up for prestigious guests, with the stylist commanding the front row. The cameras will turn to them when the crowd is reacting to their handiwork. A large balcony off a building to the right has been reserved for the game makers. Television crews have claimed most of the other balconies, but the city circle and the avenues that feed into it are completely packed with people. Standing room only. At home and community halls around the country, every television set is turned on. Every citizen of Pan Am is tuned in. There will be no blackouts tonight. Cesar Flickerman, the man who has hosted the interviews for, many, for more than 40 years, bounces onto the stage. It's a little scary because his appearance has been virtually unchanged during all that time. 
Some same face under a coating of pure white makeup. Same hairstyle that he dyes a different color for each Hunger Games. Same ceremonial suit, midnight blue, dotted with a thousand tiny electric bulbs that twinkle like stars. They do surgery in the capital to make people appear younger and thinner. In District 12, looking old is something of an achievement since so many people die early. You see an elderly person, you want to congratulate them on their longevity. Ask the secret of survival. A plump person is envied because they aren't scraping by like the majority of us. But here it is different. Wrinkles aren't desirable. A round belly isn't a sign of success. This year, Cesar's head, hair is powder blue and his eyelids and lips are coated in the same hue or color. He looks freakish but less frightening than he did last year when his color was crimson and he seemed to be bleeding. Cesar tells a few jokes to warm up the audience, but then gets down to business. The girl tribute from District 1, looking provocative in a see-through gold gown, steps up the, the center of the stage to join Cesar for her interview. You can tell her mentor didn't have any trouble coming up with an angle for her. With the flowing bl blonde hair, emerald green eyes, her body tall and lush, sex she's sexy all the way. Each interview only lasts three minutes, and then a buzzer goes off, and the next tribute is up. I'll say this for Cesar. He really does his best to make the tributes shine. He's friendly, tries to set the nervous ones at ease, and laughs at lame jokes. And can turn a weak response into a memorable one by the way he reacts. I sit like a lady, the way Effie showed me, as the districts slip by. Two, three, four. Everyone seems to be playing up some angle. The monstrous boy from District 2 is a ruthless killing machine. The fox-faced girl from District 5, shy and elusive. I spotted Senna as soon as he took his place, but even his presence cannot relax me. Eight, nine, ten. The crippled boy from 10 is very quiet. My palms are sweating like crazy, but the jeweled dress isn't absorbent and they skid right off if I try to dry them. 11. Have a great rest of your day, Team Alabama. We will catch this up next week.